everybody. So I'm doing this video because last week I accidentally uploaded to this channel a video that was meant for my other channel. And then so many of you were like, oh, hi, yeah, it has been a while. <laughs> and it really had been like four years since I posted. And anyway, the whole thing was a mistake. But hearing your comments and hearing you say hi actually really did make me want to do an update um, because maybe you are wondering why aren't we in a year and do we still love yurts? Do we still love off-grid living? So I wanted to answer a bunch of questions. Before I do that, I want to let you know how you can keep in touch with my work at the moment. I'm primarily working with entrepreneurs who live in the alternative paradigm and are serving from that zone of genius. So people like unschoolers who are setting up unschooling spaces, uh, healers and artists, creatives, people who are educating about off-grid living, starting communities and courses. It's very exciting what I'm doing. And if you are entrepreneurial in any way or want to be, if you already have a business, but you want to run it to the principles of nature, definitely jump in with my work. And you can find me on Instagram, Lucy underscore Rewild. Okay. We are in a house, <laughs> as you can see. This is not a yurt. Uh, we still have a yurt, but it has been quite a roller coaster over the last few years. So let me begin from the beginning. Uh, one winter, three years ago now, we decided that we would like to get away from the thick of winter on the farm where it rains almost every day. It's quite tricky being in a cold yurt and so we went to a little seaside town where tons of our friends live we were only meant to go for five weeks and then a big bout of covid happened in new zealand which new zealand had managed to resist for a long while and we got locked down in this little airbnb by the sea and basically by the end of that lockdown we had fallen completely in love with that seaside town. And we realized that our kids actually were now at an age where they needed way more stuff going on around them. It'd been happy, happy days, unschooling in the yurt with our beautiful little neighbor family next door. Um, but it was also hard work. We were driving huge amounts of hours every week to get them to play dates with the only friends they had you know for ages um, I know it looked for a while like we had a really popping community and we did it was good but we also felt like we were really having to make a lot of that happen and we were so tired and we only really realized that when we got to the seaside town and we we're like ah, oh, and we kind of were like it has been such a full on seven years living off grid and unschooling and we were just exhausted. So we just relished having our kids being in amazing homeschooling spaces and doing loads of cool stuff and being able to like flick a light switch and take your rubbish to the end of the road and it gets picked up. Oh my God, life changing. <laughs> Towns are actually quite a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay so then we loved it and we were just like you know what we're gonna just take this month by month see how we feel we're not gonna overthink it we're not gonna be like oh my god it's the end of the farm we're just gonna take this month by month and so we just got in a rental and the more we stayed the more we loved it and the more like our lives really sort of took off and we became more and more fulfilled and more and more joyful all four of us I'm like more of us. Um, obviously, that is tricky because we were running the farm with another family. So last year, last summer, two summers ago, had to have a really big kind of season with them where we were meeting with a conflict resolution couple, beautiful couple who did nonviolent communication. And we worked through a lot of the emotions and a lot of the processes. And eventually over a really long, beautiful time, we accepted that we're not really meant to run this farm together anymore. It's actually kind of an impossible situation. It was really sad, but it was also beautiful to go through this process with this family that we began this off-grid community with. 
Um, and then another year has gone by and then we've spent the last few months with another helper, uh, more like a negotiator rather than a mediator. Because you know what? When there's a few families involved in a project really close to your heart, we have found constantly that it's amazing having an extra person come in to just like help ease the conversation. So we had an amazing person, uh, Bronwyn, who's run this project in Wellington, an intentional community project. And she just supported our two families to come to an agreement with our farm where we are lessening our shares in the farm and our other family are taking over more shares and then they can run the farm as they wish and do what they want with the land. And they're also buying our big yurt off us and we have got our little yurt and just at the weekend we moved it to a little portion of land that is going to be our little piece that we are going to look after plant trees in and hopefully like be there with our grandbabies even (laughs) we're like still great friends with the family that we bought this land with um but that has been dedication from both families to hang in there through tough conversations but even now even more so than ever before we feel yeah like really respectful and just so much love between the two families so it can be done here's a little bit of footage of our neighbors coming over at the weekend and helping us move our bathroom block and our little yurt which we are going to keep um, down to a different part of the farm close to the river we got a new cover and new insulation for our yurt which you have to replace every seven years and we went for a different color and we're so happy with it and we're so grateful that it's the same community who helped us originally put our yurts up who were here many many years later helping us relocate our yurt. In no way do we see this a fail we just see this as an evolution um we loved our off-grid life it was essential rewilding i just like shed all of this stuff, raising my babies in the yurts and just really connecting. Like I would just lie on the moss for whole afternoons and it was like I was returning to the wild woman inside. So I'll be forever grateful for the 10 years that we lived in yurts over that time. Our whole family is so happy here. Um, So yeah, just big encouragement to you to just not label yourself and get stuck in one vision of yourself, but just be constantly open to whatever direction life wants to flow through you. That's what Tim and I have always been committed to doing is just responding to life as it wants to flow through us and not being resistant to that. And that's just basically where we are now today, living by the sea, (laughs) very random. Um, still absolutely adore yurts. A really big thing happened last year where we got a way better fire. You'd think that would be obvious, but we switched out our old wood-burning fire and we put in a massive beast of a fire and it is a game changer. It gets that big yurt warm in half an hour, whereas we used to wait three hours in the morning for the big yurt to warm up in the winter. So we still absolutely adore yurts. Um, I can imagine full-time living back in one for sure. Um, And in fact, I can imagine being off-grid all over again in just a few years' time. Um, But for this moment, with our teenagers, we have a teenager now, Ramona's turning 14 next month, uh, just being smack bang in the middle of the action is what we're loving. Uh, I would love to hear from you. Thank you for saying hi on my last accidental video. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And who knows if I'll be back. But hang in with me over on Lucy Rewild. I'd love to connect with you there. Oh. (laughs) I have a business course. (laughs) My money and business course. Rewild your livelihood. It's designed for you. It's designed for the earth-loving mama who wants to serve her community but also see her family thrive. We heal money stories in there. We do big ancestral money healing, um, but we also do cold, hard business skills because too many people think you can just do what you love and the money will follow and it's not true. 
you need skills, you need a dedicated supporter, and you need an environment that helps you nurture the side of yourself. It's three months long, it's serious, but it is Uh, very, very good value. And there's even an early bird deal lasting for the next 12 hours. So um, I'll put the details below so you can find that. Take care. Stay radical.